What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Yes, I know I've been gone for a minute, but now I'm back. And of course, I had to talk about the thing that everybody's talking about right now. Chiefly, Nubia and the Amazons, number one. Yeah, so in case anybody has not heard yet, apparently this is the issue wherein we get our first transgender Amazon, even though that's not how this works, not even remotely. But don't worry, we're going to get into that, we're going to talk about it. Anyway, we kind of start out here with a little bit of a flashback. If you will remember in, what was it, Infinite Frontier number zero, we saw where Hippolyta was leaving to man's world to take over Diana's place since Wonder Woman had died at the end of Death Metal, but now she's actually back recently, so I don't really know what's going to happen with that. Anyway, Hippolyta gave the crown of Themyscira over to Nubia, so that's who's the queen now, and we're seeing like her little flashback of when she came out of the Well of Souls and shit, which is this thing where they do kind of like go on to explain it over here because they do that whole thing where she comes out of it and then like she after she came out of it apparently the the well sealed itself or something like that what we come to find out later on is someone kind of posits the idea that the well actually corresponds to the wishes of the current queen so i guess after nubia came out hippolyta was like all right we ain't having no more kids I guess she just hit that in that moment in the trailer park where she was like, all right, I'm done dropping these bitches out. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that happened. But anyway, we see this thing where we come back to the present and Nubia is waking up and her fellow uh, Lebanese there is also waking up. She's like, oh, shh, go back to sleep. I'll handle this. So she gets up, she gets dressed and everything. And then we see this other thing where this chick, uh, Penelope, is coming in because she just needs to talk to her right now. And then her bodyguard philippus is like you know i'm sorry i tried to tell her like she needed to wait but she was insistent so nubia is basically just saying like i know and then penelope penelope like apologizes for like intruding in or whatever but she's like don't worry no offense taken i know you and hippolyta shared an informal rapport and i am glad to see you want to share your insights with me so she's like all right yeah thanks but then you know they go on she says the well of souls has opened once again that mascara will welcome new sisters so if it does correspond to like their wishes i guess nubia wanted to have more queens there i i don't know anyway so this is where we get like the description of the actual well of souls and it's keeper magala who i believe we've already been seeing in the uh, the wonder woman comics like the backup story with um young diana which was terrible 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 stories annoying shit i only read it because it was actually in the book and i was like what is this what in gay hell is this and so i had to read through it but anyway yeah like they had that whole thing where young diana's running around even though young diana was like 12 and nubia was already like 20 so i don't know where that whatever anyway so it just kind of describes the Well of Souls, a place where the souls of women who died through acts of violence in man's world reside. Only these souls can be reincarnated into new Amazons of Themyscira. So only the like bitches with a grudge, basically. I mean, I know it says like they were victims of violence or whatever, but I mean, that's pretty much like it. Th those are the only ones, the people who would probably come back bitter as hell. Those are the only ones who can come through. The All right. So the caretaker, Magala, the caretaker of the Well of Souls, came from it herself. Didn't they all? Well, like the majority of them? Anyway, she lives her life scheduled from... Secluded. <laughs> scheduled. Secluded from the rest of the Amazons, choosing to instead take care of the souls who have yet to emerge from the well. Thanks to Princess Diana, over the years, Magala has developed quite the collection of trinkets from Man's World. And we're going to see more about that later. It's actually hilarious. Anyway, so it says the status. Until recently, the Well of Souls has been inactive for centuries after Nubia emerged from it around the same time Princess Diana was born. Cleo, one of the best Amazon historians, has a theory that the Well of Souls may be connected to the will or desires of the Queen of Themyscira. So that's what I'm saying. Anyway, so we see where they're like coming out and shit and they're like welcoming them, welcoming them into Amazonian society. And I don't know what happened in this final panel because she's like, well, welcome to Themyscira. I was like, what, did y'all have a, 
a Labesian moment for a second where you like looked in her eyes and you were just love struck for a second or what the hell? Because like this is not the one. The one who's actually going to be the one that we're talking about is this bitch right here. And as you can tell, that's not her. So I don't know what it was. I would have understood if this had if this had been her and she was just like like Nubia had been like, okay, what the hell is this? But that's not what's going on. So I don't know what what this like hesitation in her voice was or whatever. Anyway, so they're all kind of just wanting answers and shit. And she's basically telling like, yo, calm down. Before we give you any answers as to what's going on, we got to test you to make sure that you some hard bitches. So you're going to go with Magala and she's going to start the, like tests and shit. Like that's, I mean, you could distill it down to what I just said. That's basically what she's telling them. Anyway, like they even ask her, like, you came out of the well? And she's like, yeah, a very long time ago. And I'm still here as I hope each of you will be. So she's like saying, you know, Magala is the best that I know. You're in excellent hands. Each of you will take part in our customary welcoming ceremony later tonight. Before that, you will have to complete a few assessments. They help us get to know you and for you to get to know us and how life is on the island. So they like take off and then this is where Philippus comes up and is talking to Nubia saying like, oh, maybe there's one here who's potentially like a guardian or whatever the hell. Like she's very concerned about that as we're going to see throughout this. So she's saying like they will make good Amazons and all this shit. And then Nubia saying, yes, well, they are not what worries me. So we see where they're like starting to like test them on all this different shit like archery which apparently they just kind of know how to do. And one thing in here, the one right here who's going to come out is like or that we know as the trans one or whatever the hell. She's standing here saying like, "But I can't remember who I was before I got here. What if I was a concert pianist or a marine biologist? What would it matter, bitch?" Have you seen a concert piano anywhere around? So what would that matter? You, if you were a marine biologist, what are you going to leave? You're literally in a brand new place surrounded by all of this ancient Greek architecture and you're more worried about whether or not you want to go study the dolphins at the beach? Shut the hell up. Anyway, so they're testing them on all this different shit. And then Nubia is saying, like, impressive. And then Philippus is saying, yes, almost as good as you were when you came to us. Perhaps someone to consider for the role of guardian. She's like, Philippus. So she says, you know, I'm right, my queen. So we see this thing. They keep like cutting over to this like door. I can't remember what the hell it's called in a minute. They're going to show it on the next page. So whenever I read it, you will know exactly what it is. But anyway, they, they have this one bitch who's guarding it. As you can see, the door started to peek open. And then as we can see on the next page at the bottom, like she saw something in there. And we'll see later on it somehow affected her. But before we do that, we have to show again that the, uh, the trans one is like just super great at everything. Because they're sitting there and they test them on how good they are with their hands. I don't know exactly what it is they're making here. I guess like pottery or some shit. Because in the back there's another one who's just kind of like holding a bowl that she made, I guess. I don't know what the hell it is that this one in the middle made. Because like she comes over, like Io comes over and it's like, oh, this is excellent work. It's like, well, what did the bitch make? I don't see anything. Did she make a plate? Is that what she created? And you're saying it's excellent work? Anyway... So they go on and Philippus is telling Nubia says, don't think I haven't noticed you are avoiding this conversation to which Nubia says, I'm not avoiding. I am contemplating guarding doom's doorway is no small thing to ask of someone. I would know because like I said, in the like young Diana backups or whatever, they showed that Nubia used to be the one guarding it. That's why I'm saying like, she's so much older than Diana, but apparently they were born like on the same night, uh, whatever. So then we go over to this thing where they give them all these like little maze puzzle balls and you have to get an even smaller ball all the way through the labyrinth. And who do you think is the first one to get it? Yes, that is correct. It's the trans one who finished it in like two minutes flat. So like this bitch is like, oh my God, nobody's done or oh my gods, nobody has done that as fast as the, like Penelope, right? No one has finished one of these mazes so quickly since penelope i guess we are all done here because apparently whoever was the first one to finish means like we're done like it was a race apparently so now we finally go over to the royal palace dining hall where they're having their grand celebration and all this bullshit so it just kind of reminds me of like harry potter <laughs> when they have all the like first year students and shit like they're all eating or whatever anyway so they're here kind of like welcoming them. And then this old bitch says, As is customary for those who come to Themyscira through the well, please, if each of you could stand and tell us the names you've decided on for yourselves. 
So here we go. We get the first one. She decides to call herself Andromeda, basic bitch. And then we get this next one who decides to call herself Xena. We already have one of those warrior princesses. Find another identity girl. And then we get this one. This one was kind of confusing because I was like, okay, so like, because the first two you can tell are kind of just like Greek design. This one almost looks a little bit more Persian, Indian. You know what I mean? And I'm not just talking about the way she personally looks. Even the way she's dressed kind of has that same motif going. And she says her name is Delphine. So they're like, welcome her. And then we get the next one who's just straight up like, look at this. This is straight up just African queen. This is, there's nothing, there's nothing Greek here as Themyscira should be. She's just straight up an African queen. She says her name is Caressi. So then we finally get over to the coup de gras, the coupe de grace. The thing that we've all been waiting for, right? We, we've all been just... We need a trans queen. We need a trans Amazon. We've all been just begging for it. And here it is. So this bitch has to give her own little like speech saying like, I can't really explain it, but I feel like even in my past life, I've been waiting for this moment. I, I've heard people pronounce it Baya. I'm going to pronounce it Bia because obviously this dude has been wanting to be a woman. So anyway, apparently the bitch finally got what she wanted. And so they welcome sister Bia. So... Then we go over to where they're basically, <laughs> this is the part I was talking about. Oh, it's Magala. That's who the old bitch is. So Magala finally took down her hood and we can see she has gray hair and shit. But anyway, she's telling them like she's always like collected forgotten trinkets. And then whenever Diana went to Man's World, she would like send her things that she thought she would like. And as we see, it's just a bunch of random shit that nobody would actually want. Like this one, she gives uh, Bia a damn magic eight ball. And then she gives another one, like, one of those keychains that just says, like, find your own way. So apparently Diana is just, like, you know, a college girl who finds shit in, like, little tourist shops and sends it home to her mom. <laughs> and that's what she's now giving to them. And they're all acting like, oh my god, this is so special. Thank you so much. Anyway, so they're sitting there doing this shit. And she gives, like, some more gifts. They don't actually, like, show what the rest of them are. I'm assuming she gave Caressi some, a box of Newports or something. <laughs> oh god i couldn't resist i couldn't fucking resist anyway so they go on and then we see this other part where this bit what's her name uh cleo is talking about cleo that's not how she looks at the, anyway so she's over here talking about how she wants to interview all the new amazons and get more information about her and this other bitch is telling her like whoa, whoa don't like hit them with too many questions they might want to jump right back in the well because i know i would so then we see these three of them Andromeda, Xena, and Caressi, who are sitting there talking, and Andromeda and Xena are basically saying, like, how do we know, like, this is, like, we're not dead, like, something else is going on here, and Caressi is basically just telling, like, maybe y'all should eat some more, because, like, the food is bomb and shit, so, anyway, we go on to Delphine, who's, like, telling Bia, like, I can't believe, I still can't believe that you got the ball through the maze and all this shit, and she's saying, like, yeah, I don't know, it was just, like, I could just tell each step of the way, I just knew what to do. All right, girl, calm down. So, this is where, uh, Mala, <laughs> I kind of like her name is Mala, because, like, in Spanish, Mala means, like, bad, like a bad girl, you know what I mean? Or, like, <laughs> it's just, so when she came in, she was like, hey, Mala, I was like, oh, shit, okay, what's up, Mala, girl? Go on, go on ahead. So, anyway, she's basically, like, had some sort of experience with, like, Doom's doorway and shit. And so we see where she kind of comes in, she's acting kind of haunted. And then this other bitch is basically telling her, like, are you okay? You don't look so good. And she's telling her, like, yeah, it was just a hard shift at the door and all this bullshit. So she's telling her, well, you won't be required to stand guard there again for at least a full moon. So replenish your strength, because I expect at least one dance from you later. So we can see Mala's just standing there, not looking very much better. But she's saying, oh, that makes me feel so much better just hearing that. Are you sure, girl? You should probably tell your face to convey that then. Anyway... So we go over to where Nubia is again talking to Philippus and Philippus is telling her, I do not mean to press the issue, but the business of champions should be sorted sooner rather than later, especially with the Well of Souls suddenly activating. We need to make sure we are fulfilling our duties. And Nubia is basically telling her, like, I would be a fool to ignore your counsel. I just am not sure how to go about it in a fair way. 
So Philippus is basically telling her, like, well, there are ways to make it fair. Like, you know that. She says, meant not only to choose the best candidate, but perhaps also to defuse the guilt a queen might feel at putting her subject in such a position. So she's basically saying, like, all right, yeah, yeah, that does sound like a good idea. But you know what? Let me sleep on it for a little bit longer. She says, the next champion of Doom's Doorway will be found, but we can't afford to do so in haste. So then we go over to this next part, where it's basically just like a dream sequence that, uh, what's her name, Penelope, I think, is having, where she sees all this different shit where, like, the ground starts splitting and Themyscira just, like, starts getting destroyed. And then she sees this thing with, like, different animals and shit, so I'm assuming they're somehow connected to it. But then we see uh, Diana, Wonder Woman, who is just, like, there weeping at the destruction of Themyscira. She's, like, crying tears of blood and shit. And then we go over to the next part of it where we still kind of see like different fragments of that. And then we also see this tree that's been shot with like golden arrows, stabbed with a golden sword and is bleeding and shit. So she wakes up and she's like, by the goddesses. And she has to like run and tell somebody real quick, right? So she runs to the door of Mira and she's like pounding on her door to like open it up and shit. So she finally opens it. She's like, what the hell's the matter? What's going on? And she tells her the well of souls, doom's doorway, everything was in ruins, everything. So she's telling her, like, Penelope, slow down. I can't understand what you're saying. She says it felt so real. And then she's, like, trying to tell her, like, it was just a dream. But she tells her, you don't understand. The well opening, it's a cursed omen. I've seen it. And she asks her, like, seen what? And she tells her the end of things where we can see, like, this whole thing where I guess either Diana or just, like, a different... Or maybe it's Penelope who was turned to stone and shit. So, I mean, that's where we leave off for now. And, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what's going on with the Well of Souls. Maybe it's, like, flipping out because it realized it let a dude through. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, what the hell? You done, you bamboozled us. What the hell did we, were we doing letting your cock and balls in here? This is not this type of party. So, I, I really don't know. I don't know where the fuck this is going to go. Because, like, for one thing, as everybody has pointed out, this is not a trans person, despite, like, Vita and Stephanie, or was it Steph? Yeah, who the fuck is it that wrote this? Stephanie Williams of Vita Ayala. Despite them trying to act like, no, it's a trans Amazon. No, it's not. It's a man who was reborn as a woman, therefore not trans. You know what I mean? If you were reborn into the body of a woman, that doesn't mean you're still a man. Like, I don't know. And this is where I'm saying, like, apparently gender doesn't exist, but it does exist in souls, apparently, because that's the only way that this makes any type of sense. If you believe that somehow someone's soul has a gender, because that must mean that this man's soul ended up in a woman's body on an island of only women. It doesn't make, that's not trans. That's not what trans is. That's not what trans has ever been. And the more that y'all try to do like representation and inclusivity, the more insulting it's getting. Knock it the fuck off and just tell me a good story. All this bullshit of having, you know, be a woman over here, like crying and shit. Like I wanted this since my past life. How do you know? You're literally saying earlier that you didn't know. And even in your own speech, you're like, I don't know how I know this, but I just know this. Quit with the dramatics. Quit with the theatrics. Tell me a good fucking story because I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of y'all trying to pander to these communities and then saying, oh no, we're not pandering. These aren't gimmicks. We're not doing any of that. We want real inclusivity. But then you do goofy shit like this that is very obviously a gimmick. And then you don't even have the wherewithal to st to fucking wait until the actual story comes out so people can read it. No, you gotta take to Twitter and say, oh, we were going to wait, but we just needed to let y'all know this is what's going on. This is what we wanted to do. This is what we were doing. That's a gimmick. That's a gimmick. That is a gimmick. That is propaganda. That is a marketing ploy. If you got to tell people about that shit before they've even seen it, then that's exactly what it is. You're trying to get more attention on your shit because you knew your story wasn't good enough to hold up by itself. Because there was no story here. What was the story? Nothing. There was nothing. All of a sudden, the Well of Souls opens up and some new a new crop of bitches comes out of it. And y'all are acting like that's a story? No. No, baby. No. Stop it. Cut it out. Go back to good storytelling. Because I know... I know if y'all really try, you could at least tell a decent story. You don't have to rely on these gimmicks, on this bullshit, to try and sell a story. So knock it off, because it doesn't work, and it's not going to do it. You doing shit like this is going to guarantee that this issue is probably going to sell a bunch of copies, and then nobody's going to care after that. 
You know why? Because Bia is not an important character. Unless you're planning to give her some like brand new identity and give her her own series, nobody's going to care. You know what I mean? You were trying to sell this book off the fact that, oh, look, Nubia, you know that black Wonder Woman that you never knew about? We gave her her own series. And then we quickly decided to make it about somebody else with this whole Bia bullshit. So I'm like, what was the point? All y'all ever try to do is pander to different groups in the hope that that will somehow guarantee your success. It doesn't work. It's not good storytelling. And it's not going to work in the end. It's really not. It's not memorable. And it won't be memorable. The only way that it will be memorable is to people like me who are just making fun of it and laughing at it about how the fact that none of this makes sense. But I don't know. They're going to do it regardless. They're going to do whatever the hell they want because that's, um, that's what lazy people do. They do whatever they think is easiest. So, yeah. That's about all I have to say about for that. And I think it was a mouthful, don't you think? But anyway, yeah, I think that's going to do it for me on this. So if anybody out there read this, I don't blame you if you didn't. But even if you didn't, do feel free to share your thoughts with me down in the comments below. You know I love to see it. I do read each and every single comment. I try to reply to as many of them as I possibly can. But sometimes I either don't have anything to build off of, of what you said, or I just... I'm busy, you know what I mean? So I'm like, I saw your thing, I will heart your comment, because I did read it, I liked it. The only time I don't heart a comment is whenever I'm like, you were either trying to insult me, or you were just trying to be stupid. So those are the only times I'm like, alright, I will engage with you, but I'm not going to heart your comment, go fuck yourself. Anyway, so yeah, do feel free to share your thoughts with me down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like the video. Make sure you're subscribed and go ahead and share out the video if you would like. I appreciate it immensely. But anyway, if you're done here, then go and read a book. Just stay the hell away from that one. Anyway, that's going to do it from here, guys. So yeah, go read a book. Just not that one. All right? Yeah, thanks. See you guys.